Hey everyone, welcome to KC3D Sparks. Today we're going to be going over how to check your 3D models for 3D printability. Now I know in my previous videos I don't typically go over this or even in my video that I did my complete overview, I didn't go over this because I don't typically do that kind of check. I usually, if I'm printing it myself, I'm just gonna wing it and see what happens and do that kind of manual check myself. But if you are interested in not having to waste so much plastic and just checking it in software before you actually do that yourself, there is a tool in Blender that you can use and there is the website that I like to use, Shapeways, that can check your models for you for making sure your walls are thick enough and that kind of thing. So first we'll start in Blender. So, you know, just start up your regular Blender, you should have it as long as you have one of the newer versions. I know it's kind of a newer tool that you will have to enable. So if you don't have it enabled, all you have to do is go up to File, User Preferences, and you'll go to this Add-ons tab. And you can just start typing in 3D Printing and it will come right up. This 3D Print Toolbox, go ahead and check that to enable it. You can hit Save User Settings close it out and you'll notice that there's a new 3D printing tab on your T menu. So if you click that, you will go ahead and see you know, you'll have statistics, checks, cleanup, scale to, and an export path, which I do find this very convenient. So you don't have to go up to file, export, STL, you know, it's just right here. You don't have to go up here. So that is a nice feature that's added onto there for you. Now the other checks can be really nice. I think solid and intersections is what I might actually start using more often. The other ones not so much. I'm not quite used to them, but I'll still briefly go over them for you as well. Side note real quick though, if you do bring this up, you can also see the actual wiki documentation if you wanted to read through it as well for some more detailed notes on these other ones. And I'm not gonna go over too much. So right now, since we just have a box, everything's fine. It's not going to tell us, you know, anything's wrong with it because technically there isn't really anything wrong. So what we'll do first is just so I can give you guys examples of what it does, because right now, I mean, obviously solid is going to make sure that your mesh is completely solid because I'm not sure if I've went over it before, but what solid is, is making sure that your print is watertight so there's no like holes or anything in your mesh so let's go into this and whoops we'll just subdivide this a few times and say one of these faces was missing and I didn't notice so there's just this big gaping hole in this box but you know I'm looking at this side oh everything looks fine You'll click this and it has a check that will show you where your hole is. It will highlight it for you and you'll be able to see, oh, I have a hole here. And you can go ahead and seal that up before you print it. Very important, especially if you're going to upload it to um, Shapeways or something like that. You'll need to make sure that your mesh is solid. So another one, so let's just undo that real quick is intersections. So intersections, a little bit different, but still a nice check is if we grab this and it's kind of intersecting here. So our shape is kind of <laughs> wonky. That's not going to work for 3D printing. But if again, for some reason you don't notice that kind of intersection because you have a much more complicated model than just a box, you'll click the intersections and again, it will highlight where the issue is. So you can go ahead, make sure, I mean, obviously you don't want to grab all the faces, but you can fix that as well and make sure that none of your mesh faces are intersecting. Very, very cool. So these all are pretty similar. The only one is, uh, I probably won't use these too much. The distorted is if you're, mesh is literally like too distorted to print like if you had a mesh face that was rotated so much and it's like 
touching almost another face and it's literally just too distorted that's what that one's going to check for which you know just like this where it's like oh what's happening with these other faces it's literally just too distorted and it probably isn't going to print right that's what that one's for thickness pretty much what you would think so say your mesh is too thin now this one I would rather use Shapeways for. I'm still noticing Shapeways thin wall checker to be better. But you know, hopefully this will improve with more updates because I think this is a rather newer add-on, or at least it is new to me. Same with overhang. If you have overhang, now this one I'm not probably never gonna use because this is just if you need supports. So say we had A hole here and you know our box is going to print this way so we would need supports to make sure that this overhang doesn't fall down but that again is something you wouldn't really need to worry about because you're gonna know like oh I'll need supports to make sure that it doesn't collapse in this hole or you would print it facing up so that way you would just print it with a hole and you'll be fine so some of these I feel like aren't totally needed. It's mainly the solid and intersections I would recommend using to make sure that your model is in order. But really quick, I'm gonna go ahead and just model these in a second so that way we can compare these checks versus the Shapeways checks. And you guys can see what you like if you wanna use one over the other or use them in conjunction like I'll probably end up doing. And yeah, you guys can decide for yourself which one you like more. Okay. So we have our basic base set up here, you know, just something very simple that we can try and print really quick. One thing to check is make sure that we have either inches or centimeters set up for our checks, uh, especially when we go into Shapeways. So let's just change this to one inch. Perfect. Close that out. And what we can do is go back over our 3D printing tools and we can see if it has any issues, no solid issues. I closed all my faces, but if I had forgotten to get rid of this face in here, it would instantly find that for me. So I could go ahead to spill that hole back up. Awesome. And actually, Let's go ahead and grab this. Let me get sure. Awesome. Okay, and then intersections as well. No intersections there. Thickness is what I also want to check. Oh, thin faces for. Okay, it caught something for me. So it's saying these top, this top lip is too thin to print. Awesome. That's great to know. So we're we'll gonna go ahead and thicken that edge up. So I'll go ahead and just grab this and size it in. Let's try that again. Go ahead, hit thickness. Is it still saying that that's too thin? I think it is. Okay, so it's still saying that's too thin. So instead of making it in more, cause I don't wanna close the hole up, We'll go ahead and add some loops in here, which will just give that a little bit more thickness as well. All right, let's try again. Oops. In phases four. Why is, there we go. I'm still saying that's too thin. So it must be here as well. So let's go ahead, bring a loop in here and one here. 
then faces two, just that side now. That's interesting. Let's just go ahead and thicken this up. Still saying that one. I feel like this one's a little bit more finicky because it doesn't really know what you're using to print anyway. So this is why I'm not totally trusting this. So even though saying that this is still too thin, I feel like it's not that bad. Um, so let's go ahead and just export this as is. Export to my desktop. It just gave it a generic name. Okay. And we'll go ahead, hop over to Shapeways. We're just going to hit Upload and select my file, Untitled Circle. I did Inches. I'm not going to select a category because I'm not going to put it up for sale anyway. I'm just checking it and then I'll end up deleting it. So we'll go ahead and let that sink for a minute. Okay, so now that it looks like it finished uploading into Shapeways, I did resize it down to an inch um, for the size that I would actually print it in anyway. Um, everything passed, which is awesome. Is there anything that didn't? Okay, well, obviously the color ones don't pass. Um, so let's go ahead and look at one that did not pass, just so you guys can see what Shapeways does to try and correct your models. So, for what is this porcelain it will be okay so obviously this is way too small to print in porcelain as is the bounding box is you know the print size available in their print bed so this one model is probably too small to print in porcelain because I mean an inch in porcelain once you finish it it's not going to be pretty. Wall thickness obviously is going to be too thin as well since it's so small. But one thing I really like about Shapeways is they give you this heat map view. So obviously the green is good. And again, this part right here, um, the red and yellow shows you where it's thin and then really too thin to print. Um, so even the bottom, but all the plastic, which I wouldn't print this tiny little vase in porcelain anyway, all of their plastic ones it was perfect for so I think blenders check for this top rim was a little too sensitive especially since it didn't know what kind of printers you're using that kind of thing I feel like if you're really trying to check your wall thickness Shapeways has this really quick check that you can do that's super simple to use and it does have um, I know for the plastic ones, maybe not for one year, it's too small, but when it's just the wall thickness, it has a little thing. Here it is, fixed thin walls. So you have to turn off heat map view. You can hit fixed thin walls. I typically never use this because it's not going to work as well as you fixing it yourself. Of course, you know, sometimes I'll try it anyway just to see what it will do. But it usually comes out kind of lumpy and not at all matching with the design of the actual model anyway. So I typically recommend just going to, yeah, because see it kind of adds a little bow there and then add these little bumps in other spots. I would really just recommend fixing your thin walls yourself, re-uploading the model and going from there instead of doing this fix button. But this is definitely the easiest way to check your models. I highly recommend it, especially if you don't want to do test printing a whole bunch or you're just not sure about which areas are going to be too thin, that kind of thing. But again, just let me know if you guys have any questions. I would love to hear any feedback or if you guys have other ways that you like to check, like if you have Cura or something that you really like to use instead, let me know in the comments. And yeah, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment, and I'll see you guys next week.